Let's say that we're doing the renovation to a building, but we don't have any as-built drawings. No problem, we have a laser scanner. Now we can create a highly accurate three-dimensional model of the complete interior and exterior of this building that we can use inside of our CAD applications to do our renovation. We start by positioning the Ferrofocus 3D laser scanner on the site to be captured. Next we will position some targets that will be used to tie the multiple scans into a single data set. The software will automatically detect these targets and perform the registration to combine the scans into a complete model. I'll position at least three targets in range of the scanner that can also be seen from the next scan location. These will remain in place when the scanner is moved to the next position and will act to tie this scan to the next. All of the scan data will be stored on an SD card that I will use to transfer to the computer for processing. Next I will set up the scanner, create a project, and set the parameters for resolution, color capture, and exposure, as well as some customer data and location information. Now we'll run the scanner to capture the first scan. To capture the scan data, the scanner uses a laser that is bounced off of a spinning mirror to measure the distance to a point the laser hits to an accuracy of 2 millimeters. As the mirror spins vertically, the scanner captures a column of data, and as the scanner rotates horizontally, it captures a 360 degree dome of points. The scanner can capture points at 976,000 points per second, and the final collection of points we call a point cloud. Next, we'll move the laser scanner to the next scan location. Since the scanner can only capture what is within its line of sight, we typically move the scanner around the building that is being scanned to fill in the missing areas and create a complete data capture. Before capturing the next scan, I'm going to position some more targets in the direction that we are moving the scanner to tie this scan location to the next. I'm going to leave the previous targets where they are now to tie this scan to the one before it. After this scan, I can move the previous targets to be the next ones for the following scan. This process continues with the scanner and the targets leapfrogging across the site until the entire area to be captured has been scanned. At this rate, I can take between 50 and 100 scans in a day, and most projects can be completed in one to a few days for typical size buildings. With only six targets, we can do a continuous scanning workflow and capture areas of any size. When working our way around a building, we should leave some targets at the start of the scan. These will be scanned by the last scan location to tie the last scan to the first and to close the loop. Now we are in Ferrocene, the software that comes with the scanner and is used to process the scans. I'm looking at the data captured at one of the scan locations. This is sort of a panoramic image looking from the point of view of the scanner. I can also look at the scan in a planar view, which takes the sphere of data and unrolls it to look at the entire scan at once. Even though this looks like a photograph, every pixel in this image is a three-dimensional point captured by the laser scanner that I can use to take measurements. When measuring from the floor to the ceiling, the dimension is broken out to give me the true vertical measurement.
Now we are no longer looking from the point of view of the scanner, but instead we are looking at a true three-dimensional point cloud of the data captured. As I zoom out, you can see the amount of data that were captured from just a single scan location. After all the scans have been registered together using the targets that were placed in the field, the complete point cloud can be seen. To do the registration, the software automatically detects the target spheres and uses them to combine corresponding scans. If it can find at least three targets between the corresponding scans, it will automatically register them together. From here, we can export the point cloud to our downstream application to use it in our planning and design purposes. When using any of the Autodesk products, we will bring the point cloud into Autodesk Recap. Recap is a high-performance point cloud visualization engine that is not only a standalone application, but is also built into many of the Autodesk design suites. We can use the Recap application to view and navigate the point cloud. By cutting sections of the data, we can view the model in ways that otherwise would be difficult using data collected with traditional means of as-built surveying and measuring. Here I'm cutting a cross section to view the floor-to-floor -floor relationships and to determine the distance between the floors. I can also get an understanding of the interstitial spaces in the ceiling plenums. Recap can also be used to take measurements and make markups of the point cloud. We can measure a point-to-point -point distance in 3D, a distance perpendicular to a face or to the center or the edge of a pipe. We can also look at the data from the point of view of one of the scan locations by clicking on one of the mirror balls to enter a real view. Here we have a 360 degree panoramic view of the model which looks like a photograph. I can take measurements in this view also. To measure the vertical clearance to the underside of the soffit, I'm going to use the ortho mode to get a true vertical measurement. Inside of the real view, I can navigate from scan to scan by clicking on the mirror balls. Recap is not only a standalone application, but is also a high performance visualization engine that is built into many of the Autodesk design applications like AutoCAD, Revit, Inventor, Navisworks, and 3ds Max. In Autodesk Recap, we can attach the point cloud to a project as a link. I'm going to start by creating a section view to align the point cloud with the level datum lines that I have established for the first and second floor of this building. This will allow me to create accurate floor plan views for modeling the building and to create a complete BIM. Right now the floor plan cut is taken all the way down to the floor level, so I'm going to adjust the view range of the floor plan view to stop the cut just above the floor. Now that looks more like a floor plan. I'm going to do the same for the second level.
The elevation views created from the point cloud are true orthographic representations of the building. This is difficult to capture with traditional photography. With a small amount of effort, we can create a rich and accurate building information model that accurately represents the actual building. Switching to another project, let's look at an example of how we can use Autodesk Revit to work in context of the point cloud data to do an architectural renovation study. This is a laser scan taken at the lobby of a historic downtown hotel. I'm looking at a 3D view of the model in Revit and I'm going to clip the roof off of the building to look at the interior of the space. Here on the floor plan, I'm going to take a section through the hallway to look at the area where we will be doing the renovation. Creating a perspective view allows me to get a sense of the space and the design requirements. I can move and look around the space in real time. Now let's do a renovation of the space. I'm going to add a new wall here between these columns. Notice that I can snap and track from the point cloud to make drafting easier. I'll also add a door. Looking back at the 3D view, we see the proposed new wall in context of the existing space. Back in the section view, we see the wall and how it relates to the space vertically. In the perspective view, we see the proposed new wall in context of the existing space. We can move around and explore the space to get an idea of how the proposed design will affect the existing space. Now let's change the door and see how that changes the look and feel of the space.